What's up guys? Welcome back to the Market Snapshot. Today we're going to be taking a look at what's going on in the Utah real estate market from November 22nd to November 28th, 2021. Um, again, what we do is break down key statistics that tell us what's really going on in the market, whether we're still seeing appreciation uh, go up, we're still seeing prices rise, or we're still seeing homes go fast. So if you're interested in what's going on in the Utah real estate market, stay tuned. <music> Just a real quick shout out to all of our subscribers. Thank you guys for your viewership and subscribing to the channel. Um, helps us feel nice, warm and fuzzy on the inside and also helps the channel grow, so I appreciate it. If you haven't already though, go ahead and subscribe to the Wasatch Front Living YouTube channel so that you get updates on Market Snapshot and other good content that we put out. Now, days on market. Last week we were at 20 days and this week we're at 20 days as well. So not, a, not much movement. Um, other than it was 20.3, now it's 20.6. I kind of just tend to uh, round down, but so I guess you could round up to 21. But basically no movement on the days on market trend there. Um, we are up from just a few months ago, but houses still are moving pretty fast. Uh, so it's still not a time to go ahead and sit on your, your hands and, and kind of wait around if you're looking to get into something or hoping that uh, a house sits around and drops in price, most of the time they're gonna go under contract and um, get off the market. Now for average sold price, last week we were at 524,000. This week we've jumped to 535,000 as an average sales price here in the Wasatch Front. So we are still seeing a rise in home prices and I mean, there's a lot of projections and you know you can read a lot of things into different projections and what different people say but as a trend we are still seeing home prices on the rise and that's just simply because there's still a shortage of housing here in the Wasatch Front uh, that goes for new construction that goes for uh, resales and resale just means it's already built either in the 80s 90s 2010 whatever it is uh, we're still seeing a shortage of product out there and a surplus in in consumers so we do need more product to see that price level out and even start to drop. Uh, so we can keep crossing our fingers for that. Or if you're waiting around, it might be a good time to get in before prices keep going up. But what kind of helps with that is that um, some conforming loan limits have, have gone up, which means that you can get a higher loan without it jumping into a jumbo program. FHA limits have gone up. So again, FHA allows you to put 3.5% down and in some cases allows you to use the Utah housing overlay, which helps with a really solid portion of closing costs and down payment. Uh, so those limits are going up as home prices go up as well. So that still is, you know, they're still trying to help out first time home buyers because they can't do anything. They, I mean, the government and other housing assistance agencies can't do anything about the, necessarily the rising in prices because simply there's a shortage in product. So um, if you're looking to get a house, uh, you, you know, you can keep waiting and prices might just continue to rise or you can get in now. Now, number of sold homes went from 492 to 339 sold homes this week. So uh, you do see obviously a change there. I again, wouldn't, wouldn't think much of it. It just mostly has to do with timing of closing of escrows and, and things like that. So. Nothing too big to report there. It's just a normal shift in you know variable ups and downs of sold homes. What we need to look for there is huge shifts. Um, if it goes way up, I mean it probably won't because there's not a lot of excess product. But um, you know if it drops to zero, obviously uh, there's a big thing going on there. That means that the lending is either stopped or something's going on with the market, right? Now, active listings, last week we were at uh, 1,870 and this week we're at 1,565 active listings. So a bit of a drop there, uh, but it just kind of goes into the same story that I've been talking about is there's not enough product on the market. And so we see a little bit of drop there. Um, what we wanna take a look at for is a continuing trend down. Obviously we don't wanna see that because that'll cause prices to rise even more from where they're at. We're hoping for more active listings, uh, more product on the market to drive those prices down. But for now, a uh, number of active listings is down and uh, we'll just have to keep an eye on where that's headed. 
Now, number of under contract homes. Last week, we're at 5,532. This week, we're at 5,533 under contract homes. Uh, not, not really much to talk about there. Uh, mostly the same things. Um, we didn't have a big drop in sold homes and we didn't and we had a drop in active listings so there wouldn't be a huge jump of things going under contract because there hasn't been a bunch of new product put on the market so um, not not much of a change again something we'll just have to keep our eye on okay so interest rate interest rate like uh, a bunch of these other categories we haven't had much of a shift this week last week we were at 3.196 this week we're at 3.181 uh, so you know for easy math we're at 3.1 or you could say 3.2 uh, for an average interest rate for a 30-year fixed mortgage. Like I was saying last time, if you want to drop down to different programs, like a 15-year or there's an ARM, which means an adjustable rate mortgage, so your interest rate can shift around, uh, those interest rates will vary. The 15-year gives you a much better interest rate, so you can go below two, even nearing one sometimes. It's pretty, pretty wild, but you have to keep in mind that it's half the amortization schedule. So your payment schedule is cut in half, which will almost always in double your payment, basically. It won't be exactly double, but it'll be basically double on a 15-year mortgage there. So, um, yeah, interest rates haven't changed much. Uh, but there is there is news on the lending side. I, as I talked about earlier in the video, uh, conforming loan limits have changed and have gone up to help subsidize the rising home prices. Uh, so... Um, for a normal conventional loan, it's gone all the way up to just under 650. So that means you can get a loan up to $650,000 um, and still only have to put 3% down. Uh, most lenders will recommend that you put five because it secures a much better interest rate. Uh, it does a lot of things for your loan to go up to 5% down, but you can go as little as 3% down at a just under a $650,000 limit. Uh, FHA also increased limits. It wasn't quite as drastic. I think the conventional side is a hundred thousand. The FHA side is was more like twenty or thirty, I believe. Um, but yeah, FHA is more around that four fifty, uh, four seventy number. Uh, that allows you to use the FHA program, which you know allows you to have a little bit less credit. So you want to be around a six sixty, but you can go as low as six twenty. Um, you can even have no down payment and use that Utah housing overlay but that will make your payment rise a little bit because you'll have a mortgage and a second mortgage on that for the loan for the uh, for the down payment and the closing costs. So something just to keep in mind. Okay guys, just to sum up, not a lot of change this week in, in the market. Uh, we had less active listings. We had a rise in prices. Days on market was uh, pretty much the same. Um, under contract didn't change much and interest rate didn't change much. So not much has happened this week. Uh, but again, we look at all this information over time to kind of give an estimation of what's going on in the market. Um, right now, um, it's still a seller's market for sure. Um, so as a buyer, it can be tough in some homes. But like I talked about in the last video, there are homes that are sitting on the market for, I mean, in this market, <laughs> what's it's kind of weird, but a home that's been on the market more than 10 days is almost like a home that's a good opportunity to, to get a good deal on. A, a good deal some some people think you can't get any kind of good deal because home prices are, are so high but what I mean by good deal is that you can get some more buyer friendly terms maybe maybe help with closing costs maybe even lowering the price more if they've already dropped the price if it's as it's been sitting um, other things fixes in the home etc etc so um, if you are thinking about getting into a home please reach out to me I'd love to um, tell you what it takes set up a strategy uh, to get you the kind of home that you guys are looking to get into. So it, it does help to have representation as someone who's involved in the market. Um, and I'd love to be your advocate in helping you get in a home, helping you get the deal that you're looking for. If you're looking to sell your home, I'd love to help as well. Like I said before, it's still a seller's market, still a good time to get uh, top dollar for your home. Another program that we're rolling out um, for Wasatch Front Living is that we will fix up your home for $0 out of pocket to you um, and you know we'll, we'll bring our crew in, they'll do the fixes and they'll take that money out of closing. So you don't end up paying any money out of your bank account, it just comes straight out of closing and you earn the extra on top from doing all the fixes, updating your kitchen, maybe your roof is a wreck or whatever it might be. We come in, fix that and then you gain all the equity from the, 
from the fix or from the update when you sell your home with us. So keep that in mind if you're looking to sell. And I want to thank you for joining us on the Wall Street Front Living YouTube channel on the Market Snapshot. Uh, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of our content that we put out. Mm -hmm.